We're happy to have our friend and teammate Jim Cott on with us today. Uh, not only a teammate of ours currently, but a longtime teammate of Dick Allen. Kitty, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys. What are the first things you think of when somebody talks to you about the late, great Dick Allen? I guess the first thing as a player would be legendary. Uh, he did things on the field that were, I mean, I could fill up the next half hour telling you guys stories about stuff he could do. The wind would be blowing in at Comiskey, and everybody would say, no, you hit one out of here today. And, of course, Dick with that famous Sports Illustrated cover picture with his helmet on, smoking a heater, he'd look, <laughs> at, me and, he'd look at me and wink, and psh, he'd hit one right through the wind. But in addition to the great uh, times I had on the field, uh, I, I just had so much fun with him, our interest in horse racing. And I think the way we really came together, I was so honored and still am that he picked me on his all-time uh, teammate list as a left-hand pitcher because, not because I rivaled Bob Gibson, who was the righty, but he loved guys that threw strikes, worked fast, and played the game the right way. And I think Dick and I both came up, him under Gene Mock, and me under a number of, like, Jack McKeon, that we really learned fundamentally to play the game the right way. He respected that, and I just love the guy. I enjoyed playing with him so much. Probably one of my best times I had. That's After it. the 1976 season, we'd won the division. Dick had a little farm out in, I think it was Dublin, Pennsylvania. And I said, I want to come out and see your horses. He had a great racehorse named Briar Bend. So Richie Ashburn gave me the address. I went out there. And he said, let's go out to the stall. So fortunately, I had jeans and a wool shirt, boots on gave me a pitchfork and we sat there stood there mucking out the stall talking baseball that today's people would think we were talking a foreign language and that was so <laughs> enjoyable <laughs> hey, hey, hey kitty uh one of the things that's amazing and this is folklore legendary but i think it's probably true and you would know because you play with him but i heard he used a 40 ounce bat yeah, I used that in batting practice, Harold, because even though I was there during the DH time. So that, that is it. true, though. He had a 40-ounce yeah, bat. Yeah, that is, that is true. But there was something about the bat that it had balance. Mm. You know, you picked it up, and it didn't, it didn't feel like a lead bat. Obviously, it was heavy. But first of all, he was so strong. You know, you see him in the pictures of the turtleneck sweater. Yeah. Most of the time he had that on, and it would be a hot day in Chicago. And I'd say Moe's. We nicknamed him Moe's as in Moses, who led the Israelites out of the wilderness. Uh, <laughs> Dick led the White Sox out of the wilderness. They drew 400,000 people, and he wins the MVP. They draw a million eight. So I said, Mose, it's hot out today. What are you doing wearing that turtleneck and those long sleeve shirts? He said, old-timer, I don't want to show him the ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> so good. You know, it strikes me, Kitty, that some of the greatest all-time Phillies were the ones that heard from the fans the most. I mean, Steve Carlton heard it. He got razzed in Philly. The great Mike Schmidt, he got razzed in Philly. And Dick Allen was not exempt from uh, feeling the ire of Philly fans either. Could it be that the greatest compliment by the Philly fan is when you're booed and cheered in the same night as loudly as somebody like Dick Allen? Well, of course, in Schmidt's case, uh, at Lefty, you know, they booed based on their performance. You know, Dick, uh, racially, it was a tough time for a player like Dick Allen to be in Philadelphia, almost like Boston. And that's why, you know, he wore a hard hat in the field. They throw batteries at him. They scream at him. And he'd write. Now, I heard he wrote the word boo in the dirt. He wrote some words stronger than that in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true and, that, he, yeah. that he, he, wore, he wore his helmet defensively for that reason? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's why he always... He always, wherever you saw him, he had his he had his hard hat on. Yeah, he was one of the first guys that I ever saw with the hard hat in the field, and and yeah. so now it makes more sense that you've told that story. That's incredible. Yeah, and of course the uh, the movie Bull Durham Crash, that's what they referred to Dick, you know, because in the old Shy Park they didn't have in Connie Mack Stadium they didn't have fans in the stands, and bang goes. I mean, he was just legendary. The the things he could do, and this guy hit th over three hundred seven times. He used to taunt Reggie, and he'd say, Reggie, when are you going to hit 300? Of course, that's when 300 and average meant something. And, and the things he could do, like uh, I heard uh, 
your previous guest, Ross Atkins, talk about arms, hands, and feet, and that's what Dick had. Quick feet, strong arms, quick hands, and uh, the things he could do on, on the field uh, with power and speed and other things, he definitely is a Hall of Famer. Well, you know what's amazing, too, looking at the video, um, watching him catch ground balls. A lot of people don't remember he was a third baseman. Yes. You know, you would think with the kind of we talk about a 40 ounce bat, the power, breaking seats with home runs, you're thinking outfielder, not first, third base. Well, of course, Dick from Wampum, PA, uh, we had a great basketball team there. He, uh, a lot of his brothers, Hank, who was on our team, Ronnie was a great athlete. Dick was a great basketball player. And you guys know from probably playing and watching basketball, uh, you got to have quick feet, you got to have hands. And Dick was an athlete. I mean, uh, Bo Jackson, like, you know, he was 5'11", 185 pounds. He could run. He probably could have, could have been a running back. But, uh, you know, it goes beyond the, the, the playing. Uh, like I said, I just really uh, enjoyed. Uh, if you have time, I'd tell one story, but it's kind of self-serving. So I don't, uh, I don't know if you have the time for it. We do have we have nothing but time because we love these okay. stories. I, I want to ask you one though about Dick Allen uh, because the man fascinates me just as much as the baseball player. I never had the privilege of meeting Dick Allen, and I'd always heard that he was a good singer as well. Like this, he was something of a Renaissance guy, not just a big power hitter. You know, he had an interest in farming, in horses, and he was a great singer. Did he ever sing in the clubhouse for you guys? No, nah, you know, Dick didn't spend a lot of time in the clubhouse. He would come in late. <laughs> Might be an 8 o'clock game, and Chuck said, you know, you want to take BP, fine. If you don't, fine. He didn't need it. And uh, <laughs> he'd walk in, and I'd be sitting on my stool as a starting pitcher that day, and he'd look up. He said, old-timer, who are we playing today? So we're playing Oakland. Oh, who's pitching? Vita Blue. Oh, I have to dial it up a little bit. And then he'd get in the on-deck circle, and Harry Carey would say, Ah, oh, Dick Allen's here. Nice to see he made it on time today. <laughs> but the, the one game, uh, I'm hooked up with Nolan Ryan. Nolan's pitching a no-hitter, and I'm giving up line drives, and Frank Robinson had hit with one off me in the early in the game. So it's one nothing. I get the last out in the top of the ninth, and as we're trotting off the field, uh, Dick taps me on the butt and says, Old-timer, we're going to win this one for you. Well, Ryan strikes out Jorge Orta for out number one. We got no chance. He hits a routine three-hopper to Rudy Mioli. And Rudy kind of looks at the ball just for a second. Dick beats it out. Next guy, they make an error, a bunt, two hits. We win the game two to one. If wow. he doesn't run that ball out and beat it out for a single, Nolan pitches a no-hitter and we lose one nothing. But that's the kind of things he could do in addition to hitting a home run uh, and you mentioned his fielding ability, rookie of the year as a third baseman, uh, is, is the hands and the speed and just playing the game the right way. Man on second, nobody out. He's going to hit the ball to right field. Oh, I love uh, that we're setting the record straight on, on the kind of motor and the kind of player that Dick Allen was yeah. with you, Kitty. Um, did you? I, I'm curious about this as well because the Phillies retired his number in September. Uh, the only unfortunate part of that is that there weren't any fans in the ballpark, as we know, because yeah. of the pandemic. Did you have a chance to visit with Dick at all about what that may have meant to him? Did you speak to him personally about that? You know, I'm sorry I didn't. I, I spoke with – I didn't know Dick right here near the end was that ill. Larry Christensen, one of my teammates, told me. So I called Willa. Willa's uh, Dick's widow now, and uh, – and we had a nice chat on the phone, and I said, is, is Dick available? She said, you know, he's tired, he's sleeping, but he always talks about you. He'd love to talk to you. And I was hoping I could get one more conversation with him, but uh, uh, I never did. But I, I know from reading his comments how, mu how much that meant to him to be kind of accepted and honored uh, in Philadelphia. Great stuff. Kitty, we awesome. appreciate the visit with us, man. We always love uh, chatting with you. We could do it. For longer, but we got to move on, and uh, and right. hopefully we we get you on again before the holiday season kicks in. Thanks for the visit today, and uh, and if we don't talk to you beforehand, happy holidays. And same to you, Maddie and Harold.